Hey there, Matt from IntelliGel here and welcome to my workbench. So today I've got Cascadia out and I'm going to look at drum synthesis again, but more the workflow aspect of it. So when you're creating these sounds, you can come up with some brilliant like kick drums, snares, hi-hats, etc. But it leaves you feeling like, oh, I could do with more than one of these, which can get a little impractical if you wanted to make a drum machine out of, let's say, eight Cascadias. <laughs> Good luck to you. So instead of that, we've got one Cascadia and we've got Digitact, which is a sampler and a sequencer. And we're going to create all our different sounds, capture them as we go, and then create a whole kit and a whole pattern and then hopefully a track. Okay, so let's get into it. All right. Just a quick note on the setup. We've got the MIDI out from the Digitact going to the Cascadia. And then we've got the audio looping back into Digitact for sampling and for playthrough. So with any luck, if I just bring up the sustain and some waveforms here, you can hear. We've got MIDI control from MIDI track A. All right, so first things first, let's try make a kick drum. This doesn't seem like an overall good starting point, but we'll work on that. Let's go to the malt. Um, replacing the index modulator. I'm going to want drive, so I'm just going to put it in now. Actually, the first thing is get the movement of the pitch. That's already sounding kick drum like. Envelope B is already normal to the filter frequency modulation. Here, let's try a bit of ring mod. Oh, if we bring up the index, that's kind of, again, giving us some tones in there. Kind of want to sync the oscillator every time the kick drum hits. But here that click is really consistent. Oh yeah, I could add in the wave folder. How's that sound? Oh. I think it's just reinforcing the level, but we kind of want to add some motion, so... Let's just link it all to envelope B. Why not, eh? There are plenty of cables around here. I just need to find them. Right, let's try this. Oh, yeah, nice and aggressive. See, it's a little calmer there. Add in some of that index modulation and we get something far more aggressive with a combination of all of it. This is cool. Let's record it. Okay, sign it there. Oh, that's good. I like that. Okay, so now the kick's in there. Let's go to the snare. What does a snare have? It has a fundamental, which we've got here. It has some noise. And one thing I like doing is taking an envelope and inverting it and using it to modulate a high pass filter. And to my ears, it gives this kind of natural decay. So let's set that up first. So here we've got envelope B with an inverter. I'll take the inversion out and then plug that into FM1, which is normal to envelope B, but the positive version. So right now you can hear that's going against the um, low pass, but we want high pass. We're going to kind of shorten the sound with envelope A. What else? We need some frequency modulation for sure. Maybe envelope A to start off with. If this doesn't work, we can try envelope B. So we get the oomph of the snare. Wave folder for this one? I mean, I think the mildly folded sign is probably doing a lot of work here to just put the fundamental direct into the signal and circumvent the high pass filter. So that's the sign and the ring mod and the noise going through the high pass filter and then we're just bringing that fundamental with the not so wave folded. Ah, oh, yeah, no, that's a bit harsh. So. It's just serving the purpose of filling out the sound, honestly. Ooh. Okay, a little buzz from the square. Ooh. 
How does that sound with our kick? Ah, uh, no. See, you can hear that I need to change this a little bit. Hmm. Definitely needed a bit more noise. Nice. Okay, so let's record that then. And then we'll put that on the snare. Cool. Great. So now we've got a snare. Let's add a tom. Okay, so where to start with a tom? I suppose what we don't want to do is have the kick and the tom in the same kind of area. So right now we've got this in this neutral setting. Going to want it to decay in the same way as the other sounds. I've already got the index modulator. Let's maybe do a bit of like, yeah, like a rumble. This is a good opportunity to go through VCA B, the noise. So output from there, input, and then straight out, and then go to the aux in instead of the wave folder. I'm thinking to use envelope A for a few things. So I'm going to molt that out and goodness I was going to use envelope a to control the decay because you think about how a tom is in real life so there no there <laughs> whoops doesn't it have enough punch I think we just needed a little more level out of it. Still not quite snappy enough. Think, 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 think. Maybe it doesn't need to be over the top because if we think about it, we've got a punchy kick and punchy snare. That's actually not. I think we're actually closer now. Tune it a little bit. Let's just put it into a pattern here. So record that and then put it on the tom. Right, I think it's time for a clap now. So this is our white noise, pink noise, quite busy. We've got the alternative noise here, which we've got set to crackle. You can change what type you've got to a few different options that we'll look at in a sec. but. This one's currently set to crackle, which I think is going to work for this. So we go get band pass. Do we want it four pole or two pole? I don't know yet. I think two pole kind of works for this. And it's already sounding quite clap like. So we want that to move slightly every time. So if I do a little patch of the MIDI trigger to the trigger input of sample and hold. So if you can see that there, it's going to change every time. Let's hook that sample and hold to the frequency modulation. Let's keep the envelope in there in case we need it. Like really subtle. Only just pushed it slightly over the edge. And then a really very sharp envelope from envelope B gives a little snap. We could, I quite like that. That's good. Okay, let's record it. Okay, so that's four there. Trim save and then we'll assign that to clap okay we've got kick snare tom clap next is cowbell so where are we starting with cowbell see that already sounds quite metallic doesn't it and you know where that's coming from that's the wave folder what we're likely to want is like a complementary tone so take VCOB's, mm, let's try triangle. 
output, put it where VCO A's sign would normally come out. Maybe a bit of modulation here. Get something kind of like metallic. Kind of needs to ring out a little more. That snappy envelope B is going to come back into play. Interesting. Well, anyway, let's record it. Are you happy with that? Yes. Cowbell. So, once again, we have... Maybe if I sneak on a little... Sample rate reduction. No one will ever suspect a thing. Nice. Okay, so we've got hi-hats. Right, so I'm just going to turn your attention to the screen which I'm recording right now. I've got the IntelliJ config app open. So with Cascadia, you've got a few functions under the hood, which you can access by holding buttons and power cycling and stuff, and, and that's all well and good. But I would say the simplest way to change these settings is via the config app. Once you've downloaded it and installed it and plugged in your Cascadia via the USB-C connection on the back to your computer, you can go ahead and open up the config tool, find Cascadia in the drop-down box, and then hit connect. And then we've got all these settings that we can choose from. So for hi-hats right now, we want to focus on the alt noise type. So currently our alt noise type is set to crackle. We've got crunch, which is 8-bit and 8 kilohertz sample frequency, so it's a bit more digitized. And then we have velvet, which is, as it sounds, quite smooth. But we're going to want cymbal, which has that classic characteristic that you hear in drum machine, kind of hi-hats and rides and cymbals, etc. Great, so now we've looked at that, let's head back to Cascadia. fixed so it sits in with the rest of our stuff here okay let's send midi clock to cascadia let's take the midi clock and go to the gate input I think we can make use of it some way to morph the sound so that we can make a little hi-hat loop. Let's take this saw waveform, invert it, put it through the sample input, take the sample and hold output. I kind of want that to be unipolar, so we'll put it through this little bipolar to unipolar converter. And that way we only get movement from that in one direction. I'm gonna just do this manually. So let's arm the track and go. Let's go trim that, save that, closed hat. Let's program it in then. Nice, okay. And then we get a little fade out, very cool. I'll tell you what, well, instead of a open hat, why don't we just make something else like a shaker or a, not a shaker, uh, what they called, kibasa? See, already there. So let's get that triggering on. I mean, that works straight away, right? So let's just take that sound and then let's just 
do that. Okay, then, so for this last slot, I'm thinking instead of a symbol, why don't we add like a chord or something? So how do we do that on Cascadia? I hear you ask. Well, right now we have one note. If we take the other oscillators sawtooth and mix it in, we have two oscillators. The next one I was going to use was this one. So we've got LFO X, we plug it into here and the rate is currently full. And if I play a note, you can hear we've got a sort of triangle wave. You know what? I know what we have to do. It's, it's occurred to me. We're going to take that, we're going to put it in the sum mixer, and then we're going to take the sum mixer output and put it into this fader here. So we're not going to have like control over this and the fourth and final waveform, but it should be fine. Last one, envelope B. So if we change it to LFO, if we take the output of that and plug that in here, make it more buzzy like these saws so let's let's tune it in it's quite difficult but that's fine because we kind of want to use it as a one-shot style thing anyway um i'll plug this back in oh nice okay yep using the the modulation input you can track this but we're just doing, doing a one-shot Although I liked the harmony of it before, I think it's probably a safer bet to pitch this around rather than... And it sounds just quite lush now. Oh. Okay, so let's record that. Okay, sign that here. Done. And oh, nice. Add some reverb, delay. So now we've got this kit. The final thing I've done is I've got a um, MIDI track controlling a lead line on here so we can bring it all together.
so there we have it. Eight different sounds from Cascadia into the Digitax. You've got a whole kit. And the whole thing was pretty seamless. Recording them straight in and being able to reference them against each other meant that the whole kit felt really cohesive by the end. You don't need eight Cascadias. No one needs eight Cascadias. Well, maybe someone does, but nah. Just one and a good sampler and sequencer, and you can make a whole electronic kit. And this is just one iteration as well. There's so much scope for different styles of music. You know, it's just whatever you can imagine, really. Thanks for watching this video on Cascadia. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe for more of these in future. And yeah, hopefully see you in the next one.